There's a pretty one, Ulysses. Well, hello there. I'm Sean the Book Maniac. Welcome back to my channel. I wasn't going to do this. I promised myself I wasn't going to do this. I'm doing this. I am participating in Reading Rush, the f inaugural under the new name, The Reading Rush. It used to be the Book Tubathon, July 22nd to 28th. And this is my TBR. The reason that I didn't think I was going to do it is I got burnt out with readathons in June and I took a, took a break. And I am going hardcore with Women in Translation for the entire month of August. So I thought I would give the Reading Rush a pass, but FOMO, people, FOMO. So here's my TBR. I have some buddy reading and other commitments that I'm going to try to squeeze into it. I'm not going to try to do all of the prompts because, to be honest, some of them I didn't like, but most of them I did. And, but I am going to try to read seven books in seven days, more or less. If I find that it's too much for me, I'm not gonna push myself to do it because like I say, I will be going almost immediately into hardcore women in translation reading for the entire month of August. So here's what I've come up with. There are seven prompts or challenges. Oh, and I'll put all the stuff about the reading rush in the show notes. Number one, read a book with purple on the cover. And in fact, this one would also qualify for Women in Translation Month, but I hadn't put it on that TBR, so I'm going to sneak it in just before. And that is The Remainder by Alia Trabuco Zoran. This was a long-listed for the Man Booker International Prize this year. I don't remember if it was short-listed. Heard good things about it. I'm pretty sure Eric Carl Anderson quite liked it. And I'm going to do it. She's a Chilean writer. Translated into English by Sophie Hughes, and it is a road trip that reveals new ways to think about historical memory. I am in. Pretty short. I've chosen, intentionally chosen, a bunch of short stuff. This one is just under 200 pages. And there's purple. Number two, read a book in the same spot the entire time. I'm reading a bunch of shorter books, so any one of them would qualify and I tend to do almost all of my reading sitting at home in my electric recliner so this one won't be hard to fill but I will choose one of the Faber stories Doris of Aldi Books and I have been reading the entire collection of Faber stories that have been released as single bound volumes this year to commemorate Faber's 90th birthday 90th anniversary I'm not sure which one we're doing next it's Doris's pick but probably she will have chosen which one before this video goes live, so I will put the GIF here, but it's probably be a 40 page short story and that will be the one probably that I do for challenge number two, reading a book in the same spot the entire time. Number three, read a book you meant to read last year. There's so many that qualify, but I have gone with a Welsh writer that I have never read before and I now have two of his books on my physical TBR and I must get to one of them to see if I like him at all, and that is, it's Keenan Jones, and this is his novella Cove, published 2016. I'm not sure where this fits in his uh, literary output, but it is about a man out at sea, struck by lightning. And it looks kind of prose poem and should be a relatively easy read, but who knows. Number four, read an author's first book. Oh, this is going to be fun. I have started collecting these editions of reprinted women's novels from the 30s, 40s, and 50s by uh, the publisher is Dean Street Press, and the imprint is Furled Middle Brow, and this is the first one I got. Alice by Elizabeth Elliot, and it is her debut. I don't know anything about her other than that the Queen, later since 1952, known as the Queen Mum, called her a humorist of the first order. And I did read the opening couple pages the other day just for fun, thought I might pick it up at then, and I loved it, but I, I didn't continue, but I am going to read this. It is a deliciously dark tale of Margaret and her friend Alice in their final year of boarding school in the late night from the late 1920s until just before World War II. So that's a long span. 
And there's actually a blurb from Queen Elizabeth, later known as the Queen Mum. This is surely the most impressive first novel of the year. Elizabeth Elliot is a writer to watch. Wow! Originally published 1949. Just over, around 200 pages. But gorgeous editions, these reprints from Furled Middle Brow. I just love the name of the imprint, Furrowed Middle Brow. <laughs> so I'll put a link to all of those details in the show notes as well. Number five is the first prompt out of the seven that I will be skipping. Nope, nope, nope. And that is, read a book with a non-human main character, not on your life. Number six, pick a book that has five or more words in the title. This was fun. Finding one that was short and five words in the title, I have settled on... An autobiographical novel by Denton Welch, A Voice Through a Cloud, which he died just before he finished. I did, I'm learning that detail as I pull up the Wikipedia page. It was published in 1950. He died in 1948. And this is actually pretty moving. Denton Welch was a young gay, I don't know, he was kind of open in his fiction about being a homosexual or well, gay writer in the UK. As a very young man, he was injured in a bike car accident, and it left him quite disabled and with all kinds of health problems and caused his premature death. He died in December 1948, 33. And this was his autobiographical novel about that experience, so I think it's going to be quite emotional. Yeah, he was 20 when he had that car accident. He was on the bike, hit by a car. I hate when Wikipedia doesn't give the publication date. I read his perhaps his most famous novel. He's not a famous novelist. He should be. In Youth is Pleasure. I absolutely loved it. And when was it published? 1944. Well, I have a full review of that novel. I'll put a link in the show notes. That novel made me feel obsessed about him, but it wasn't a true obsession because it's been more than a year and I have yet to read anything else by him. So I am going to amp that obsession up and read this one for the reading rush, A Voice Through a Cloud, and I think it's going to be emotional. <laughs> the final prompt is also one to which I have a big nopity nope nope, and that is read and watch a book-to-movie adaptation. Movies suck, people. They suck. So I'm skipping that one. But I do intend to do seven, so I have two more on my list that don't fit any prompts, but just because. And one of them is a previously scheduled buddy read. This is a collection of two novellas by William Trevor called Two Lives, and the first novella, Reading Turgenev, is 200 freaking pages. More than 200 pages. 220 pages. And I had already scheduled a buddy read with Brian of Bookish for that, and so that will be, even though it's the first part of a book, it's a book-length novella, people. I'm counting it. And really looking forward to buddy reading it with Brian. I've long been interested in William Trevor. Brian worships William Trevor. And so did Ian Lee, whose collection of memoiristic essays, the short version of the title of which is Dear Friend, talks a lot about her friendship with William Trevor during the last years of his life and how much this collection meant to her. So that's why I want to read it. So do the first novel, Reading Turgenev with Brian for the readathon, and then we'll schedule the buddy read of the second novella later on. And the final one is, and this is another writer who I absolutely loved, the first book I read by her, but it was a year and a half ago and I still haven't gotten back to her, and that's Gloria Naylor. So I'm going to read Bailey's Cafe, a 1992 novel. It's a loosely intertwined group of stories, all told in the first person about the owners and patrons of a cafe. That reminds me of the structure of her most famous novel, The Women of Brewster Place, which I read a year and a half ago and absolutely loved, and I never have gotten back to read more by her, and I'm going to, if all, all things being equal, I'm going to read Bailey's Cafe for the reading rush. So, that's my plan. Do you think I'm crazy? Don't answer that. <laughs> I probably won't get all of these read in seven days, and I am not going to push myself to do it. I will, in fact, be starting one other buddy read at the very end of this 
week with Britta Bowler, which I will not be trying to include here. And if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. But I'm going to try to read as many of these as I can. And if I start a bunch of these and don't finish them by, what's the cutoff date? By July 28th, that's totally fine too. I am so pumped because all of these books sound so interesting that I'm going to... I'm going to... I'm going to give it my all. So I look forward to seeing your Reading Rush TBRs and any comments you have about my list. Have you read any of these? Any comments? Thanks for watching.